We're in a field on the outskirts of Berlin. It's time for the radish harvest. Everything picked here is sold and eaten. That might sound obvious, but it's not. Half the food produced in Germany ends up in the trash. That's 750 truckloads a day, 11 million tons per year. Many farmers discard unwanted produce at the picking stage. Spoiled vegetables are not allowed to be sold, and retailers don't want anything that doesn't look exactly the way the customers want it. Farmer Christian Heimann says such vegetables are labeled misfits. He shows us a kohlrabi that has split. It normally would never be sent to market because of its appearance, but farmer Heimann will definitely make sure it's appreciated. It goes straight into our crate, because we're on a mission to save food. We want to find out how to stop so much food from ending up in the trash and meet some people who are already doing it. People like farmer Christian Heimann, who runs a project called Speisegut, or food well. Every week, he packs crates of fruit and vegetables for his customers, including, of course, the misfits. The farmer and his workers call it solidarity agriculture, and they began this year with three hectares of land. Heimann has a group of ready customers who finance seeds and farming costs for produce, such as this lettuce. Heimann says that in conventional farming, the size of a potato is decided before it is even grown. That way, consumers have no choice about whether the carrots are curved or a radish has split. His philosophy is that consumers should be able to have a say in what they eat, and they can choose locally grown fresh vegetables from him. This lettuce may be locally grown and fresh, but it's too small for a supermarket. Heimann's customers don't mind, though, and they're prepared to pay 13 euros for their weekly crate of produce. It might not be cheaper than the aesthetically perfect veg on sale in the supermarkets, but it is healthy, and it tastes just as good. The next stage is all about getting the food to the customers as freshly as possible. Farmer Heimann says he adapts his harvest to the number of customers, so he only grows as much as he needs. In the summertime, when he often ends up with more than necessary, the excess is immediately used in some way. So if he has too many zucchinis, he'll make zucchini chutney, for example. Und, und, und. But the bulk of Heimann's crops go straight to his customers. We visited one of them in an indoor market in the Berlin district of Kreuzberg. Chef Florian Klim runs a canteen there, with a focus on regional produce and sustainable methods. He has no problem with worm-damaged vegetables, for example. He shows us a radish that would never normally be used, but he points out that most of it is still all right once the bad bits have been cut away. He says no one will know the difference, apart from the fact that less food is being wasted. The cooking and the philosophy behind it have caught on in a city where many people are very conscious of what they eat. Misfit radishes are always welcome here. But in an affluent country like Germany, that's the exception rather than the rule. It's well known that supermarkets throw away a lot of perfectly edible food. But how much? We contacted several major chains, but all refused to comment. Still, some people are reacting to the waste. They're known as dumpster divers. We decided to meet one, and we were warmly greeted as fellow food savers. Benjamin Schmidt is a 21-year-old student. He agreed to take us on a dive through some dumpsters in search of edible waste. Benjamin insists he's not doing it to save money. 
He wants to keep his ecological footprint as small as possible, while drawing attention to the huge quantities of edible food that end up in supermarket dumpsters. After closing time, we head into the backyard of a small supermarket. First stop, the fruit and vegetable bins. Benny means principle is simple. Check everything and put the good stuff into a crate. He immediately finds some good veg. We're amazed. It's like a culinary treasure hunt, and the darkness adds to the thrill. In fact, what we're doing is theft. This food is still the property of the supermarket. Benjamin will even take slightly damaged goods, such as a split tomato, if it looks like it's still fresh. We try to get as much as possible without attracting attention, but then we are suddenly approached. A passerby has come to express her support for what we're doing. She says she also gets angry about how much food is thrown away here so casually. So we're not the only ones who are concerned about food waste. Is dumpster diving becoming socially acceptable? At the moment, it's restricted to political activists and the poor. We continue to pull out one piece of perfect veg after another. This cauliflower doesn't have a single mark on it. But it's not all plain sailing. The first bins might have been okay, but others are less appetizing. A lot of the things we are now finding have passed their sell-by dates. There is pre-cooked food, meat and pâtés. It's illegal to sell these products once they've expired. We don't really want to take any of this home with us. But then again, there's still plenty of good food here, such as some tasty-looking bananas. <laughs> By the time we're done, we found some rich pickings, and it's not just fruit and veg. We've got cartons of yogurt and curd cheese that are due to expire soon, but Benjamin explains that they can keep for another couple of weeks or months after the printed use-by date. We take a few items for ourselves and leave the rest for Benjamin. He'll take his share and post the rest on an internet site called Food Sharing. The system allows people with more food than they need to pass it on for free. We find a tasty-sounding food basket in Berlin and set up a handover with the user Raphael F. A few hours later, we meet up with 29-year-old Raphael Filla, a long-time food saver. He tells us he can feed his family for free using the food sharing system. In fact, he says he has too much at the moment, so he's giving it away before it goes bad. It sounds good to us. Two-thirds of the food thrown away in Germany comes from private households. Raphael takes us to see a new project that the food sharers have started with local organic supermarkets. Many shoppers here are quite picky about appearances and tend to reject produce that is slightly bruised or spotty. But instead of throwing away the rejects, the supermarket saves them up for the food sharers. That saves money on garbage collection and is good PR, too. This shop assistant says it feels good to pass on rejects, knowing that someone will be pleased about it and maybe make a mango lassi or a nice salad. And it doesn't end up in the trash, but with Raphael and other food savers. Raphael and his friends come here several times a week, and they often collect more than they can distribute. He says that if he posted everything on food sharing, then he would be spending four or five hours a day handing it all out. Few people have time for that. So the crates are often simply handed over to those in real need, or to family and friends. Uh -huh. 
It's a good way of getting good food to people who can't go shopping themselves for whatever reason. But in the end, Rafael and his friends aren't necessarily doing this for social reasons. They want to draw attention to the culture of waste and to set an example with their actions. Rafael points out that food waste is a problem that affects us all, and not just supermarkets, farms and restaurants. So we should all question our own behavior. He says food waste is a mainstream issue, and everyone should pull together to bring it down from its current 50% level. So far, some 20,000 people have registered with the food sharing site alone. And we can imagine joining them because we found out how to save food, too. We've harvested misfit vegetables in a field, pulled some tasty tidbits out of a dumpster, and saved other food from going bad via food sharing. Mission accomplished. Not only did we rescue all that food from the trash, but we also saved a good 20 euros and have enough food for several proper meals. There's a big feel-good factor in this, but it's still pretty shocking. Was all this good food really being thrown away? While we can't see ourselves as regular dumpster divers, we are determined to throw away as little as possible in the future. So now, it's time to put this food where it really belongs. In our stomachs.